Hello and welcome to this video from the Little Things Junkie. Um, if you've not visited this channel before, uh, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I am the little, the little Things Junkie, if I can say it. Um, what that means basically is, is that I, I like making models of, of all kinds. Um, it's my it's my primary hobby. Um, I've decided to do uh, to share it on YouTube. So I don't belong to any clubs or soci societies, um, but it's still it's still nice to show show what you do. Um, and to be frank, I think making these videos is going to be a motivation to me for uh, for getting things finished and trying um, to uh, striving to to get things done to a higher standard. Um, so that's the reason for uh, for me uploading these videos. If it's the first time you've uh, you've viewed me. Welcome. Um, if you've come back from watching previous previous videos, then um, I'm, I'm honoured and flattered. Thank you very much for returning. Everybody is very welcome to to, uh, to watch along and to comment and to, to uh, share my uh, well, indulge me really to uh, to share my my hobby with you. What I've uh, been doing recently is not a lot. Uh, I've had uh, had a little time away on holiday. Uh, I've been working very hard. Uh, and this hasn't left, left a lot of time for uh, for, for modelling. Uh, free time has been hard to come by recently um, so I, I have a little bit of progress to show you um, let me crack straight on with this t64 that, I, that we're, we're, i'll be showing you this is the uh, the, the trumpeter um, 1981 model t64 um, the, the hole as you can see has, has come along it is mostly finished now um, i've started to uh, to lightly lightly weather it um, uh, if if you haven't seen the first video in this series, my intention is just to have a, uh, a kind of a grubby vehicle, uh, but not one that's overly uh, muddied up and, and certainly not chipped. Um, just to sort of, uh, I want to depict sort of a worn, well well used vehicle that's that's, that's been through washdowns and just has kind of like ground in dirt, but but nothing more than that, and a little little sort of little, little wear and tear. So what I've done is uh, I have applied a, a sort of a, a, a dust wash to uh, to most of it, uh, sort of a, a little, if I can find the pointer, here we go. Um, so sort of um, around these areas you'll see sort of like light, light dust deposits um, and all that is is a, an enamel wash. Um, I, I made my own rather than uh, rather than buying some propri a proprietary one um, and all I've used is uh, I happen to use this, uh, this Revel um, enamel colour it happens to be number number forty one. This is um, just highly thinned with uh, white spirit and used as a as a enamel wash would normally be used. Um, it's just uh, it's cheaper using uh, using a, a making your own. I think um, and you, you know, if you have a collection of, uh, of enamel paints as I do, both Humbrol and Revel, uh, then you have a wide range of choices and it's easy to mix your own and make make one that's appropriate for the uh, for the for the subjects you're making um, so it's had a lot of uh, uh, dust wash over it um, I have done some oil paint on it I used here we go this old tube of uh, rowney um, raw umber a great color for things such as uh, sort of where these little ribs in the fenders um, have may well have had a little bit of wear and tear over them around the headlight guards, this sort of thing, where the the paint would be be worn thin. It may well be it may well be chipped, um, sort of, the, but the green paint would be worn off down to any any kind of primer underneath it. Um, easy to use, easy to use uh, oils for that effect because they are, as we all know. Um, so uh, blendable and removable uh, so if you put it on and, and you, you can feather it out easily and if it's too much just the damp a uh, brush damp and white spirit will remove it and you can start again um, ideal ideal for that purpose um, on top of it in a few places very few places i have done some uh, uh, indicated some some uh, patches where it's worn down to bare metal and what i used for that is um, graphite powder um, now you could use um, a pencil um, and do have the same effect. Um, but what I've done is use this powder um, and applied it with a, a silicon colour shaper brush. Uh, incidentally, this uh, this is exactly the same as as many brand sellers as metal pigment or whatever. Uh, but it it's substantially cheaper than uh, than, than buying AK or Vallejo or whatever. Um, I am I, I'm a cheapskate. I'll, I'll look to save money wherever I can, and uh, that's one one place to save money. Uh, what else have I done on this on this uh, on this tank? Well, 
um, the log is is off the vehicle. Here is the uh, here is the unditching log. Um, I'm going to repaint that. I'm really not happy with what I've done. I've been looking at it and looking at it, and every time I look at it, I, I become less and less satisfied with uh, with what I've done. I based that this painting on a on a vehicle I saw in, in a museum that had a. Uh, a it looked like a maybe a pine tree as a log, and it was a very very smooth um, bark. So, I mean, no sort of uh, none of the sort of typical uh, sort of heavily textured bark uh, wood effects on it. Um, it was very very smooth. Um, it was a reddish colour, um, quite shiny. This thing, and I I, I based this painting what I painted on on what I saw in this museum. Uh, but quite frankly, I think it just looks awful. Um, I'm going to repaint it. I'm going to paint it in the more maybe the stereotypical sort of um, tanny grey wood. Um, and see how see how that works out. Um, I've got to do something because I'm just I'm not I'm never going to be satisfied if I leave it leave it as it is. Uh, anything else I've done? Uh, anything else I've done on this? Um, I I don't know what this particular part is on a T sixty four. I imagine it's a fuel filler cap. Um, and what I've done there is is uh, just done a sort of game with oils. I think I use there for for to indicate some sort of. A staining leakage of, of oil or diesel or whatever. Um, these uh, these little sort of brackety things on the side of uh, on the side of the, side of the rubber skirts um, and the, uh, the, the the bolted strips along the top that uh, hold the rubber skirts to the to the vehicle. Uh, I've seen a, photo, a couple of photographs online of, of, of real ve vehicles, and they always seem to be not always, but very often seem to be rusted. Uh, I'm guessing it's very sort of thin sheet metal, um, not painted particularly well, and it corrodes readily. By well, that's, my, that's my my interpretation of it anyway. Um, so that's basically the whole done. Uh, oh, sorry, what, the 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 lights. Now maybe someone can help me here. The, the the lights I've done as, de as depicting um, clear lenses, white white light, and I've done that by painting the insides of the uh, uh, the headlight mounting with uh, AK Super Chrome, um, a really really good paint. Uh, it's very thin. Uh, it can be it can be sprayed or it can be brush painted. If you if it's brush painted in, in small areas, it works. It's, it's fine. Um, it it. Really does look like chrome uh, once it's uh, once you paint it on, and it dries super fast. Um, I recommend that product. Really good for for, for shiny, uh, for depicting shiny metal. So I painted the, the the bowls of the headlight units with those, and then just popped the uh, the clear lenses in. And I've seen photographs subsequently online of, uh, of these vehicles that, that appear to have infrared lenses in both uh, left and right headlights. Um, you know the 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 dark reddish black infrared opaque lenses and i don't know if i've done what i've done with depicting white light is accurate or not um i guess it doesn't really matter but again if if somebody knows more than i do and is able to to comment and let me know if i've done this correctly or whether i need to overpaint it and, and make it look like a, um make them both look like infrared lenses then um please do let me know um so really, all that leads for the vehicle is to continue with the uh, the turret. Um, I will do much of the same. Some some light dust weathering in in certain places. Um, the canvas mantlet cover needs to be needs to be painted. Uh, a moder you know, a moderate amount of of, of wear uh, rather than sort of damage is is, is what I'm aiming for. Um, not quite sure how to how to how to approach the uh, the barrel. Um, my, my belief is that the uh, fume extractor here would be metal, and that and that the uh, thermal sleeve of uh, the Soviet tanks is more of a sort of uh, hard uh, fiberglassy type thing. I believe. Again, people know better. Please let me know. So I will try to depict the the two. Uh, two materials, so the the steel and fiberglass, differently, um, and I think the uh, the muzzle should be um, bare metal. Um, so the other thing that I've done is to uh, paint the crew. Um, now the first one, let me show you this. He is uh, he's going to be the, uh, the the driver. He is the driver. Um, 
and there he is. And here's a trumpeter figure uh, that I I bought uh, in a set of. Excuse me. Let me let me show you. So he comes from this set. Um, it was an inexpensive set, um, which is just as well because I I'm not terribly impressed with the uh, the quality or well, the quality of. Uh, of the, of the trumpet of, uh, figures, uh, the, the detail is, is rather soft, um, but I think for this this driver, m not, nothing much more than, than his head is going to be visible. Um, so I don't think, don't think it really matters. Um, quite quite small as well, quite small figure. I think it he, he, I mean, doesn't matter that he can depict a a small man, um, but uh, considerably smaller than than other one thirty fifth. <laughs> 135th figures. Uh, the other two figures I've used are slightly modified from, from this ICM set. Uh, it's quite an old ICM set. Um, their, their current figures I, I'm, I think are very impressive. Um, these figures are adequate, adequate for the job. Um, I've slightly modified them. I've just sort of taken, taken arms and legs from different figures in that set, um, put them together, um, cut bits off and reshaped other other bits just to make make these two figures sort of work with this vehicle. So uh, oh and they've got um hornet heads uh, re uh, replacement heads on. Um they're not bad figures actually. They 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 work fine. Um so that's the that's the gunner um waving at something. And this is the uh this is the commander. Um they they're a little bit crude. Um the, the the detail isn't as sharp as I'd, I'd like, but I could say I think that I think they're adequate. Um, let me pop them in the vehicle and we'll see what what they're going to actually look like. Okay, so there they are in situ. Um, like I say, you don't really see much. The driver, um, he, he's fine. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to bother making another figure for that for that crew position. Um, and I think these these two work work quite well. The commander and uh, and gunner. Uh, I, I don't know what they're uh, what they're waving at. Um, we can, we can use our imaginations to, to, to uh, suggest maybe that they've uh, I don't know waving at a pretty lady or uh, <laughs> and, uh, or uh, or a, a colleague as they're driving past it or something. Um, I think I'm, I'm quite happy with the way, the way they work, though. They're, they're not bad figures. Um, the the commander seems to have has have particularly large, chunky hands, um, but fine. I can, I can live with that. Um, as I say, the uh, more recent ICM figures are um, a, a couple of steps up from from the quality of these ones, um, and are, are very impressive. Um, I think the 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 hornet heads make all make a world of difference for the for these figures though. Um, they're very, they're very convincing sculpts. Um, so anyway, that's that's where it is. That's um, that's where we are with this with this kit at the moment. Um, there's not a lot more to do on it. Um, just the uh, say light weathering of the turret. Um, put it all together, and uh, we'll see we'll see what comes next. Um, I'm thinking of doing a a, a build video next. Um, I don't have a subject in mind. Uh, the build videos seem to be very, very popular on YouTube, um, and I mean, I, I watch them myself. <laughs> I watch a lot of them myself, quite frankly. I, I get, I, I, I get a lot of pleasure from watching other people um, take me through the process of building a particular kit and hearing their take on how they do things and why they do things. Um, so, if you think that sort of thing is going to be more popular than this kind of just like a show and tell type of video that I've been done, doing so far, um, again, do let me know. Um, I know that they're, they're, they're Awkward. They're going to be awkward to uh, to film, maybe a, a build, you know, a build video. But I'll, I'm willing to have a go. Um, if if it is something that, that people, if you think you prefer it, prefer that style of video, let, let me know. Um, like I say, it's about um, it's about sharing what I do, and I'd like to share it in the, in, a, in a way that uh, is is most enjoyable for other people. Um, so anyway, I'll stop waffling. I'm rambling on a bit now. Thanks for watching. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure making these videos and uploading them. Uh, and if you do have any, anything to say about what I'm, what I'm currently making, positive or negative, you know, if you've got any, any, uh, any comments, any uh, constructive criticism, please do let me know. Um, I'm, all, I'm all ears. So, uh, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.